from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the 3D BIOS, which are dual UEFI BIOS for the Gigabyte Z77X UD3H motherboard. At this time, we're in 3D mode. As you can see, it does have a picture of the motherboard, and the different components are flashing to show you what to click on to tune your system. To the top left, we have the Gigabyte logo. To the top right, we have our CPU core speed and our base clock frequency, as well as our memory uh, memory frequency. If we move down below, we can see that we have an advanced, a boot, language, fan control, time, load default, save and exit icons. This is 3D mode. Basically, what you're going to do is if you click on boot, it'll give you your boot priorities. If you click on language, it'll change your languages. Your fan controller, of course, will set your fan controls to the different speeds that you would like it to be. Right now, I have everything set to normal. Time, of course, this changes your... It enables you to change your system time or show it. And, of course, your load defaults is going to load your default settings or your optimized defaults for the motherboard. And, of course, save and exit save and exit or don't save and exit. Let's go ahead and focus on the motherboard itself. As you can see as I scroll over the different things it gives you an idea on what they're for. This memory and the CPU of course are for system tuning. The VRM PWM are for the 3D power. This is for your integrated peripherals where your IOs are and of course your PCIe. And then, of course, we have our SATA. So let's go ahead and start with system tuning. If we bring that up, as you can see, there's three different tabs. The first tab is going to be your CPU ratio for your frequencies. And this is going to, going to allow you to change your frequencies, change your multiplier from 30, 35 to whatever you desire. Um, of course, this is, if you're using a K processor, a new Ivy Bridge K processor, it will be unlocked, so you will have that ability to change your multiplier. Next, we have our CPU base clock. That is set to 100. If you go ahead and change it from auto, as you can see, it, it highlights the bar, and now I can change my frequencies for my base clock. Processor graphics clock, same concept. Extreme memory profile. Right now I'm using extreme memory, so I have that on profile one, which is my XMP profile for my memory. Of course, that's set to auto since I'm using an XMP, which means that I'm using 1600 uh, megahertz memory, and my memory frequency is 1600 megahertz. Memory timings. Once I set this to quick or expert it's going to open up the CAS latency, T TRCD, TRP, the TRAS on both channels and I'll be able to set my timings there. Voltages. Voltages can be changed here also. By changing this to different frequency by clicking on the button you could change it. You could go to normal then you could also go to the next one which will be actually allowing you to slide to change your V-Core voltage. CPU VTT, IMC, which is your internal memory controller, and your DRAM voltage, of course. Let's go ahead to the 3D power now. This is for our phase controls. Basically, you're going to be able to control all your phases for your VRM. Everything is digital now. So if we go ahead and change that, we could change it to performance. We could change it. Once we're on performance, we could also change it to high performance, extreme performance, balanced, light power, mid power. So you have different options to change that to. Your voltages. These are your load line calibrations your, for your VRM. Basically, what they're going to do is it's going to set to to control your phases so when you're performance tuning you're going to be able to calibrate it so you get the right amount of voltage to everything all the time to keep your system stable. Of course again normal 
standard and we can change our load line calibration via the slider. V-Core protection, same concept. Under current, we can change the V-Core current protection, the VTT, graphics, and our DDR channel A and B. Then we have thermal. These thermal properties, I usually keep them at default. I don't normally play with them. I'm not doing any LN2 or anything like that, so I'll just keep them at what, what the bases are. So let's go to our in integrated devices. We have our rear panel. Audio device controller is enabled. Onboard LAN is enabled. USB, I have legacy USB support. USB controller is enabled, and the USB 3 controller number one is enabled also. Coming to our expansion slots, that gives us our slot configurations and it asks us what display we want to initialize first. I have that on auto at this time. And then we have additional BIOS fe features if we click on the PCH. We have the boot up number state, boot up number lock state, our full screen logo, virtualization technology, and system language. And then, of course, last but not least, our SATA ports. And it'll tell you what you want to, you know, it'll ask you what you want to do with your, your SATA controllers. I have them enabled. I am using SSD caching at this time. Gigabyte, Gigabyte uh, sorry, makes a very good uh, program. It's called Easy, Easy Store. And basically, what you're going to do with that is once you put your install even if you do it in HCI and you want to go ahead and start using SSD caching with that program it's one click it automatically raids your system for you and it'll set up your SSD caching for you it's a it's a very good uh, software program that they are, they actually have it does work okay that's it for easy mode as I like to call now let's go ahead and look at advanced mode Advanced mode is going to be more like you might be used to with normal BIOS. Of course, you're going to have your MIT, which will give you your current status for your MIT. Advanced frequency settings. Of course, again, you could do this from the front, but this is just basically some redundancy here. Advanced memory settings. As you can see, I have Extreme Profile, Performance Enhance on my memory, uh, Channel A and Channel A timings, Channel B timings, Advanced Voltage Settings, 3D Power Control. This gives you all the currents that you had up front, just laid out differently so you might be able to tweak a little bit more your CPU core voltage control again same as up front DRAM voltage control PC health status of course this is all your fan controls etc your system temperatures Sorry, I'm uh, using this uh, right-handed mouse left-handed here, so. <laughs> and of course, uh, the PEGO generation. And this is for basically your, what generation PCIe card you're using, Gen 1, Gen 2, or Gen 3. I keep it on auto, it, it works fine. Then we can go into our system settings system basically just shows you what you got there you know what you're using what your language is what the date and time is what your access level is and then of course your ATA port information shows you what you where your hot plug is if you want to use hot plug it tells you what hard drives are plugged where etc BIOS features your BIOS features basically are going to give you your boot options 
what do you want to boot up first? What do you want to boot up set second? What is your primary? What are you going to do? Of course, full screen logo, your ROM capabilities, etc. Peripherals, it's going to show you peripherals. SATA controller, SATA mode, XHCI pre-boot pre driver, XHCI mode for your, your ports, your different ports, USB controller, audio controller, your initial display, internal graphics, internal graphics memory size, your DVTM total memory size, and Intel Rapid Start technology. We go over that in the review, so you might want to go ahead and read the review and we'll tell you a little bit about what that is. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go ahead and scroll down again, and hopefully I won't go past it and it won't come back. Okay, so we have our legacy U USB support, RX, XHCI hands-off, EHCI, the port emulation, onboard, USB controller 1, onboard LAN controller, slot configuration, smart connect technology, another Intel, uh, Intel technology which we'll talk about in the, in the review itself, and of course your Marvel controller which is your GSATA ports, and I don't have anything populated so of course they're not activated at this time. We then go over to power management. Power management is exactly what it says. It's going to tell you how to power on, put your sleep states on, etc. Standby modes. And then finally we have QFlash, which will enable you to flash your BIOS. And then save and exit. So we'll go ahead and go back into the 3D BIOS mode. We'll click save and exit. Exit without saving, are you sure? Yes. And of course it'll go ahead through its boot schedule and it will go ahead and boot up. It does boot up very quickly. And that has been our quick look at the 3D BIOS for the Gigabyte. G77, <laughs> sorry, the Z77X UD3H motherboard. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Stay thirsty, my friends. Bye-bye.